Hello viewers, this is an American Things back again with another follow-up for the Season 6, Episode 5 video uh, that I put together, response video for uh, Game of Thrones. Um, I've been putting a lot more thought into this uh, episode, particularly uh, Bran and his double warging into Hodor. Uh, that whole sequence of events. Um, you know, there's something that hasn't sat quite right with me about it, in particular, uh, philosophically. I mean, um, you know, if, if that's really possible, that they uh, time travel and change events according to their liking, uh, that, you know, really doesn't make for great storytelling for me. It's, uh, you know, essentially you're just watching a charade that's controlled by uh, a few uh, hyper-powerful telepathic uh, puppeteers. And honestly, it just didn't seem like good storytelling. Uh, so I've been thinking about it uh, quite a bit and rewatched the uh, scenes a couple times relating to this. And I've come up with something here I'd like to share and get some feedback on. But let's go over the timeline of the events here really quick so we make sure we're all on the same page. So uh, the thing that sort of triggers this is when Bran goes rogue and he wargs into the weirwood net by himself. Um, and he goes and looks at the others, and he ends up getting touched by the Night's King. And when he returns, Bloodraven realizes what has happened. And he says, you must leave, all of you. And then he says, the time has come for you to become me, says this to Bran. And then they don't actually leave. They hang around so Bran and Bloodraven can jump back into the Weirwood Net. And they hang around in the Weirwood net in an otherwise bland and unimportant uh, point in time. While, meanwhile, uh, back in real time, the others show up at the cave and our climactic fight scene ensues. And the children of the forest prove that despite being apparently thousands of years old, they can't hit the four main guys walking in the front row. And the fighting moves into the cave where it gets more desperate because Hodor is doing his Hodor thing. So Bran's not going anywhere. And Mira Reed starts shouting to Bran to warg into Hodor. And Hodor stands up. Uh, they finally start making their exit, except they're being followed. And then Blood Raven dies. And the escapees keep running down the tunnel when all of a sudden Leaf turns around and then OMG! He's holding a thermal detonator! <laughs> And then we get to the titular door, and Bran sees the young Hodor in the Weirwood net go crazy. While in real time, the older Hodor holds the door, holds the door, holds the door, Hodor, Hodor, Hodor. Now, this timeline of events is important because everything happens in a particular order. The first thing that's odd to me is that when Blood Raven finds out about the Night's King touching Bran, he says they need to leave. But then they go straight back into the Weirwood net, which, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't really a very effective means for escaping. In fact, Bran could have simply warged into Hodor right there in real time and made for the back exit without all the drama. So, it must be important for Bran and Bloodraven to go back into the Weirwood net uh, for some other reason, uh, no pun intended. So, let's dig into this particular time travel scene in the Weirwood net. It begins with Bran and Blood Raven basking in the ambiance of Winterfell. And then Bran hears an echo from real time of Mira telling him to warg into Hodor, which he apparently does. But the Weirwood Hodor, or Willis, or Walder if you read the books, is still doing his usual stable boy thing, without apparently suffering any ill effects. Then Blood Raven dies, and then Hodor collapses on the ground in a seizure, screaming, Hold the door. And in case you missed that, let me say it again. Blood Raven dies, and then Hodor collapses on the ground in a seizure. Are you pondering what I'm pondering, Pinky? This seems an awful lot like what happened when Veramir Sixkins tried to warg into Thistle. No, in fact, this seems exactly like what happened when Veramir Sixkins tried to warg into Thistle. All of the important elements are there. A powerful telepath dies and tries to warg into a more simple-minded person causing a seizure. Unfortunately, Thistle turns into a white right afterwards, so we don't really get to see what uh, if Verimer's uh, mental takeover attempt uh, causes her mental trauma afterwards or not. 
but the more I've watched this scene and thought it over, the more I'm convinced that there was no double warg. Um, as an additional point, take a look at this still. This is Bran watching Hodor's seizure. This isn't the face of a telepath warging into someone else. This is the face of someone... So, why would Bloodraven do this? I can think of two reasons. Um, one, he knows that Bran is going to be his successor, and he knows Hodor plays a pivotal role in Bran's life. So if he could successfully take over Hodor's body, he could be an immense help to Bran during Bran's life, uh, and the adventure to the Wall and beyond the Wall and so forth. Unfortunately, it looks like, in the end, Bloodraven wasn't successful in taking Hodor over. So he settled for the next best thing. He used that moment to imprint on Hodor's brain the immense importance that at some point in the future, there's going to be a door, and he's going to need to hold that door for as long as he can. So, that's reason number one. Reason number two. Bloodraven is obviously very smart, but it wouldn't necessarily take a smart person to deduce a few things. First, they would need to draw the White Walkers and their Whites into the cave before someone could escape out the back exit. Two, that everyone was going to need to hold the cave while Bran makes his escape. And three, Hodor was going to need to hold the door, because the only other person is Mira, and she's not big enough to hold the door. Which leaves a conundrum, because Hodor is needed to hold the door, but he's also needed to carry Bran, because Mira isn't big enough to do that either. I mean, sure, she can drag him for a ways, but she's not going to make it back to the wall with him. So Bran's going to have to figure out an alternative to get back to safety. Now, obviously, if Bran could walk, he'd have a lot better chance of making it. So if Bloodraven could demonstrate to Bran that he can body jump or soul jump or whatever you want to call it into a new body, then Bran could have a much better chance of surviving, making it to the wall telling the humans about the others, and playing a role in the final resolution of the story. But, here's the sad part of where this logic is taking me. The only person around for Bran to jump into is Mira. And we'll see if the show presents some other resolution, but if it happens, it had better happen fast, because this girl can't carry Bran for very long before the White Walkers catch up to her. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. 